If you've ever wanted to have automated posts in Slack when you create news in SharePoint, we're gonna show you how to do that today. Hey guys, my name is Ashley, and today we're gonna to talk about integrating Slack to SharePoint using Power Automate. A lot of organizations use SharePoint for their internet, but also use Slack as their main uh, chat tool in the office for communicating amongst employees. So at the same time, there's a general issue of keeping employees informed. So people feel more engaged and happy when they're informed and current on information, whether it's internal company organization or they're just being kept up to date on projects, status updates, things like that, all the way to fun posts, like here's what's going on in our company, here's uh, an event that we had this weekend. So for companies that use Slack, there's not an integration that exists for getting a notification automatically when news is published in SharePoint. There are ways to connect SharePoint automatically to Teams. So if your organization uses Teams, there's a, a connector that's very straightforward to set up that automatically posts when a news article is posted. Um, and that feature got us thinking, since we use Slack heavily, is we'll get more engagement on our news posts if people are receiving that new news article post in Slack, or if we notify people in Slack that there is a news article to go look at. So we looked into how to set up a custom flow in Power Automate in order to receive these notifications. Before we dive in, please go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified every time we upload a new video. All right, so we're gonna get started with walking you through how to set up this flow by first creating the flow and the trigger associated with it. So I've got Power Automate up right here. I'm gonna go ahead and click Create. And then you're gonna to want to select the Automated Cloud Flow. Um, so first give it a name. I'll put Slack notification for news post. A little warning, if you have multiple news sites, you're gonna to need to set up one of these for each of those sites. So be specific in the name for which specific site that you're creating this flow for so that when you go to create the triggers for your other news sites, um, they'll look differentiated in your flow list. Uh, to choose the trigger, you're gonna want um, when an item is created or modified in SharePoint properties only. So here it is right here. Just make sure that that's the one that you select and then go ahead and hit create. Now we're gonna set up the trigger. So this is the next step that you'll be brought to. For the site address, it might pull up in this drop-down menu, but what you'll probably need to do is enter a custom value and then go ahead and just copy and paste your new site. Um, so you'll paste it right into the site address box right here. For the library name, you're gonna to wanna to look at the site pages library. So I'm gonna to have to enter site pages as a custom library. We don't wanna do the document library because news posts are created as a site page specifically. That's what we're gonna to wanna to use for our trigger. And then this folder section here, just leave blank. Um, and once you have this filled out, go ahead and click for the next step. The next part of our flow is determining if it is a new news post. Since this could trigger for anything created in the site pages library, we wanna set up um, some conditions surrounding the identification that it is A, a news post, and B, a new news post. So to start, we're gonna set up a variable that we're gonna use in our condition in the next step. So you'll hit initialize variable as the next step. Um, I'm gonna name it version, because that's really what we're gonna be checking here. The type is going to be string, and then for the value, simply enter 1.0. Basically, when the version type hits 1.0, we know that it's been published for the first time. And we're creating this variable because sometimes Power Automate could include different versions, and we wanna make sure that it hits this number specifically. All right, next we're gonna set and define our condition. So this condition has two parts to it. The first is the version number, and then the next is the promoted state. To show you guys this step, I'm gonna jump to one that's already completed so that we can talk through it a little bit better. So here's what it looks like in the flow. The action that you're setting up is simply called condition. 
Um, and then I added this text, which is basically just adding definition to this condition that what this is doing is checking if it's first published version and if it is a news page. SharePoint dynamic content is going to show up here. And so you're going to set up version number is what you're going to uh, select. And again, it's included in this list of dynamic content that is provided in your flow since they know you're using SharePoint for this connector. So version number, you're going to set equal to your variable that you just created. So again, this is dynamic content. You select your variable version, shows up purple and a different color here. And then the promoted state is the next part of the condition that we need to set up. Both of these need to be there, again, to first make sure we have the news article and that it is a new news article. Our variable covers the fact that it is a version 1.0. It means that it's new. It's being posted for the first time. This next part, promoted state, needs to be equal two, and then you're just going to enter the number two. You don't use dynamic content, just put in the number two. And what that does for the condition is that defines that it is a news page. Um, why that works? We don't really know. Two is just the number that works. That's what Microsoft chooses. Maybe they'll change it later and it'll break my flow, maybe not. We have one of my coworkers here, Michael Wright, who tested a bunch of different ones, and two is what works. So two is what works to identify that it is a news page. Next, we're going to post to Slack. So since we have this condition, we know it's a news post, we know it's a brand new news post, and we're gonna set up our yes part of the condition to post a custom message to Slack. Don't worry about if no, since we don't want anything to happen if if it is not those things. So for if yes, first uh, what you're going to have to do is choose an operation. And this is really going to help Power Automate like figure out your connectors and which dynamic content they give you later. So make sure you select Slack as what you want to connect to. And you're going to select post a message since that's what we want this flow to do. So once you select post a message, it will pull up um, a couple of options. So we're going to pick the channel name. So which channel in Slack do you want this message to be posted to? And then what's the content you actually want in your message? If you're connecting to Slack for the first time, Power Automate is going to lead you through a couple of things to just confirm to connect to Slack. Um, if you've done this before, it'll go straight to this part. Uh, channel name, some pre-populate, or you can just enter the custom value and type in the channel name exactly as it appears in Slack that you want this to post to. So I'm going to type in general under the channel name. That is the exact name in our Slack environment for the general channel. Um, again, if you're doing this for a specific project or something, you're going to want to select that channel. For the message text, so here's where Power Automate is going to give us a lot of dynamic content to pick which aspects of the news post that we want posted in the message. So this is really going to be up to you. I would definitely try out a few different versions to see what gives your readers information, enough information that they're going to want to click and view more, but not too much. So I'm gonna jump back over to my completed one to talk you through some of the things that we set up um, in this one. So I like to use uh, some formatting stuff because you can make aspects of it. This will show up bold or italicized in the Slack channel. Um, so I added a title, new post, bulb family updates. Uh, so that'll show up no matter what. And then I use the dynamic content to pull the specific title, who wrote the article. And again, any enters that you enter here, spaces, are all going to show up that same way in Slack. So there's a brief description that pulls from the description line and then a link to the item. I mean, out of all of these things, I think at least the title created by and a link to the uh, article are probably the most necessary. And then I added some text saying view full article. So just something to prompt people to know that that um, is a link to the article and they'll feel prompted to, to click and read more. So that's really it. After you have it set up as far as which aspects of the article you want it to show, the spacing, the styling, make sure you save your flow. So click save at the bottom and then go ahead and test it. 
So to test it, you will have to create a mock news article in the SharePoint uh, page that you just set up your flow for. So just create a test article, and then when you publish it for the first time, give it a good 30 seconds and see if your message posts to Slack. Here's an example of what the, the flow that I just set up here with you guys, what this looks like in our Slack channel. So there you have it. Uh, if your team uses Slack, but also SharePoint, this is a great way to make sure everyone stays up to date and current on your company's news articles. There are a lot of nuances in Power Automate as far as ownership. So if, if you're creating a flow in the initial setup as far as if you're assigning it to yourself or if somebody is creating this for your organization and it's created under their flows, uh, there are some things you want to remember. Uh, you can create flows under groups. You can share them with certain people. We have a whole podcast on that because it does get quite complicated, uh, but it's just something to keep in mind when you're creating flows that you want to last in your organization, even if people leave. So we'll leave a link uh, in the description box down below to that podcast if you want to learn all about ownership of flows in Power Automate. To learn more about this and all kinds of other topics, we have an entire learning center on our website. Feel free to check that out, browse around. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them as a comment down below, but sometimes the questions get a little bit complicated. To answer those, we do have open office hours once a month. Feel free to check out the link in the description box to look into office hours if you have a question that might require a little bit more explanation. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.